Uh, so appreciate everybody coming today to our talk about uh, conifers for the garden. Uh, we're going to talk about many of the different genera that are available for the garden. So let's start with the A's and let's look at the genus AB's. So this is what we know as firs, and typically we think of as there's not a lot of firs that we can grow here in the south. And this is the best. This is a fir from Turkey called the Turkish fir, Abies born muliana. We think it's the best fir for the uh, southeast, and it's one that's uh, uh, it's sort of like growing a Fraser fir, except it actually lives and is very tolerant of moisture, tolerant of, uh, of heat, where uh, a lot of the others aren't. The other would be Abies firma, which you'll see on the back side of the garden. Uh, another genus is very popular are the Camisipris or false cypress and these range from very dwarf to fairly tall. This would be considered a dwarf Camisipris and this is the uh, called Hinoki cypress and this is uh, one of the gold leaf forms. Uh, keep in mind that the word dwarf means somebody has a taller one. It means that it doesn't, it's not a size. There can be dwarfs like this that wind up 12 feet tall. Uh, these are a plant that will grow in sun. They do not like shade and they also don't like poor drainage. They need really good, uh, good drainage. One of the more unusual conifers we grow is this one right here. This is Ketelaria. This is a plant that late J.C. Ralston was real excited about. A beautiful evergreen in flower now, but it has these amazing cones. So if you, for people who like to decorate with cones, uh, uh, Ketelaria is really quite incredible. Uh, when we were in China, they actually fed us Ketelaria. Uh, not something I recommend, very tough to eat, but a, a beautiful plant, a lot more open. So if you're one that likes everything sheared, that's not your plant. But if you like the beautiful architecture of something like this, great plant. Uh, behind us here, this is a West Coast plant. This is the Alaska cedar. Now you wouldn't think a plant labeled Alaska would grow here, but it actually does. This is a Camisipris nutcatensis, been tossed around in a couple of different genera uh, now, but uh, turns out this is a great plant. Where it grows in the West Coast, it grows in very wet areas. Here we've got it in a much drier habitat and it's much slower but it grows equally as well and this is available in an array of different colors uh, and sizes. One of the great conifer genera for the south are the podocarpus. Uh, you don't see those grown. We're sort of on the northern edge of where people grow podocarpus. This is podocarpus macrophyllus, also called podocarpus chinensis. And these are great because these take shade. They'll take shade, they'll take sun, and they're much narrower. So they have a very different uh, use uh, in the garden uh, and fairly fast growing, sort of fast to medium uh, growth rate, but uh, Podocarpus really a lot of potential there. Genus which has grown a lot uh, further north, not as much down here, is the genus Taxus. These are known as U. So up north, every house has clipped hedges of Taxus. This is an unclipped uh, hedge of Taxus. Uh, this is one that turns bright gold. This is Oresens nana, turns brilliant gold uh, in the spring with the new growth and then turns green later in the year. We don't prune any of ours, so these are all unpruned, natural-looking specimens. Uh, we found that Taxus, as long as the drainage is good, will do really well in the south. And just like the uh, Podocarpus, they are very shade tolerant as well as sun tolerant. The spruces. Now there's a fair number of spruces we can grow in the south. There's a lot we can't grow. This is Picea abies. This is the Norway spruce. This is considered probably the most adaptable of all the spruces. Uh, and this is a particular one that comes out with gold new growth in the spring. But these can get quite large even in the south, say up to uh, a 60 feet. Now behind us, is a cryptomeria. There's a lot of different cryptomerias. This is one of many. Uh, cryptomerias can range from 60 foot trees down to dwarfs that only get a couple of feet tall. But cryptomerias are known as Japanese cedars uh, because obviously that's where they're from. Uh, also, fairly shade tolerant, not in deep shade, but they're really good in light shade.
and then right behind us is one of the deciduous conifers. Now most conifers keep their needles all through the year, which is why people like conifers. But this is one of the weeping ones. This is our native bald cypress. This is a, a native to the uh, southeast U.S. Uh, it drops all its needles, but it just like the other plants, it does have needles. It just uh, drops them in the fall. Here is the other fir that does really well. We mentioned earlier, this is Abies firma. This is one the late J.C. Ralston really promoted. Uh, much more open than the Turkish fir we saw earlier, but uh, a fantastic plant here in the southeast. One of the conifers that does really well in the shade is this plant here. This is a plant called Thujopsis. This is an Asian native and basically is an Asian version of one of the arborvitaes. Uh, this one does equally as well in full sun as it does in full shade. And then right beside that is a hemlock. Hemlocks are fantastic uh, conifers for the south. There's a number of different ones. Suga canadensis is our uh, most common, and there are several of Asian species of which uh, uh, this is. Uh, all do very well here. So far, some of the Asian stuff has shown better resistance to the woolly adelgid uh, issue, uh, like this one has had no problem at all. We haven't really talked about any junipers because we've been going through more of the shade garden, but this is one of the junipers. This is a version of shore juniper, which often is seen as a ground cover plant. This is one called Akibono that makes this wonderful uh, architecture. Uh, I, I love this. Now again, if you're a meatball type person that likes everything pruned in little round balls, this is not going to be your plant. But if you like the form, a natural shape of plants, then this is pretty special. So we looked earlier at some Hinoki cypress. Here's another. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, lemon twist. Uh, beautiful, uh, again, very interesting growth. It's a very textural plant. Uh, really does not like shade. This is one that does have to have a lot of sun. And then up behind us, this is a Diodor cedar. There are three species of true cedars, uh, the genus Cedrus. Uh, this is, uh, Diodor is the tallest, it's also the most common. A really special plant. You can find this in some compact forms, some forms that are yellow, some forms that are really nice. Powder blues is an array of plants available with that genus. And a little more diversity over here, we see another juniper. Uh, there's so many wonderful native junipers, both to the east and is all the way into the southwest that are quite uh, exquisite. You can get really different, again, architecture types. Beside that is one of the gold thread cypress. Uh, that also is a fault cypress, uh, the genus Camisipris. So the ones we saw earlier, the Hinokis, are Camisipris obtusa. This is Camisipris pacifera. So when you hear somebody telling you there is a dwarf gold thread, slap them, because there is not. Again, dwarf is not a size, dwarf is a relativity. This is lemon thread, and this is sold as a plant that matures anywhere from, depending on where you're looking, four foot to eight foot. There is a 25 foot one. So that's 25 by 15. So when you hear somebody say it gets six foot or they sell you as dwarf and it's a small plant, it is not. It is not a foundation plant. It is a full-size conifer. Looking very similar to that over here is an arborvita. This is a form of our native arborvita, Thuja occidentalis, which is a wonderful plant. Comes also in an array of shapes and sizes, and it does have a little bit of shade tolerance. So this one can also take sun or shade. So I hope that gives you a little opportunity to look at the incredible diversity there is in the world of conifers and, 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 and how they really can contribute to a garden in the middle of winter.